Hey, what's up, guys? I'm going to do these videos mostly a little different. Uh, I don't have the time, uh, but I want to get them out. Uh, I need to work on the comic. I'm drawing, pay I drew so many pages for two comics going on, and I want to uh, have Asylum Girls Club 2, Chapter 2, uh, posted uh, in the last Friday of February and get, the whole, get that going throughout uh, the whole year. I don't want too many pauses with the uh, Island Dominion, the Peacock, and Against the Goddess. Uh, so my plate is full, particularly on uh, other projects. So, But I like the videos here. So I'm just going to, if I show anything, I'm just going to show, you know, if you look up the video, this is what you'll see. Someone actually has this particular movie up. Uh, so go on them and give them the credit. Uh, I don't want to do this too much. I don't want to deal with copyright. I don't want stuff being blocked when I work on it. Uh, with editing, I don't have time for that. A lot of times, I'm just going to show you the boxes uh, and just give you my spin on it. Particularly the Shaw Brothers stuff because uh, they're notorious for copywriting their stuff um, uh, to the letter. So, and I just don't, I don't really have the time. Uh, I just want to share some ideas of the film. Uh, this film, Masaki Kobayashi, is actually one of my favorite Japanese directors. Did quite on, did a lot of dramas, did a lot of post-war dramas. Uh, did the Human Condition, which is probably one of the best uh, film series uh, ever about the Japanese in Manchuria uh, during, before, during, and after the, the that Great War that keeps coming up all the time. Uh, now, Hadakiri is a, little, is a, is a samurai film. It's, called, it's been called an anti-samurai film. Well, it's definitely anti-authoritarian, but uh, there's a little, there's nuance in this. Uh, a very famous a dissident person. Uh, I had mentioned this film in a film series, liking it a lot, and uh, it was, it's definitely the case that this is a, a very interesting, nuanced film. There's many layers to it. Now, you hear that a lot, but this really is. Okay? It is anti-authoritarian, uh, but what authority is the protagonist going against? Okay? Uh, like I keep saying with the Lone Wolf and Cub video I did in the comic, there's a, a traditional anti-authoritarianism. Okay? Essentially, Harakiri is about, it's uh, after the unification of Japan, um, the, uh, the clans that have won, now there's a whole generation that's gone by, literally 16 years since the last uh, rival clan was crushed. And now you have houses and you have uh, lots of honor. Uh, you have young samurai coming up who have no combat or fighting experience, who are very stylized. Uh, weapons and very stylized uh, uh, etiquette, uh, but you still have a couple of ronin who haven't killed themselves around, and this is the one, the uh, Tatsuyo Nakadai, I think the actor, uh, he is uh, a samurai who is basically uh, in Hiroshima, uh, he has for whatever reason not committed a, a harikiri, uh, and he's uh, making umbrellas, right? and of course he has a family member uh, the young husband is also, he is a samurai, uh, the young husband, I believe, of his niece. Uh, and what, the, uh, what a lot of people did, what a lot of samurai did who were starving, who didn't kill themselves, they would go around threatening to do this in front of uh, the, the houses that won. And it was kind of like a, a little game because the people didn't want to have this guy disembowel himself on the street. So they were kind of like... Say, you know, no, no, here's some money, you know, no, you know, it's okay, and, and this and that. Uh, well, the, uh, the, this guy's, uh, I guess, son-in-law or nephew-in-law, whatever you call him, uh, he goes to the wrong house to do that, uh, and essentially, without giving it away, he is forced to go through with the act, which is made difficult by the fact that uh, he has sold his blade for money and has something else as a substitute, uh, and he has to use that. I don't want to give it away, but it is one of the one of the nastier scenes in terms of it's not particularly gory, but the concept of doing that. And this guy, he's a he's a man. He goes through with it with this um, substitution. Um, yeah, it, it's a it's a rough thing, and it gets back to this character here, an older man that doesn't want trouble. Uh, and when this happens, uh, he realizes that he must uh, re get revenge. Okay, and he knows that he's not going to survive. 
the thing that I like about this film, all the things you've heard people talk about, the thing I really liked about this film is very relevant in other areas of, let's say, I don't know, uh, you know, stuff that James, my friend James Lafon goes over. The uh, the conquering houses have now a new generation of samurai who are very stylish, very fancy. They have very complex rules. They're very bureaucratic. Um, they they have they have literally no combat experience and very limited dueling uh, experience. Okay, but they think they're they think they're the shit. And when they run into this older guy who you know hasn't fought in 16 years but fought in combat in the, in the Japanese Civil War okay uh, of which you know he was from Hiroshima his daimo his warlord was one of the ones that lost so uh, but he knows he, he knows how to fight uh, and that comes uh, to a head in this when he goes after these things and the uh, the uh, conclusion of this is brilliant on many levels okay it shows you systems uh, it shows you the managerial kind of uh, complexes that really kind of rule us, okay? Where, where you know, uh, honor is not only, <laughs> you know, uh, honor is not only not a commodity anymore, it's a uh, liability. Uh, really, really, as you can see, it's a very, uh, very, uh, it's a scathing denominator of feudal authority and hypocrisy. Well, you could say that uh, I would add the nuance of it that the authority, the feudal authority that he is dealing with is a newer authority. It's a unified, centralized uh, Japanese government. Uh, and they are anything but traditional. Uh, this man was traditional, not the people that he was going against. So it's just interesting. It's just interesting to play with that. And Masaki Kobayashi, uh, he's kind of like... Uh, He's sort of like me. He's like he left this from another time, uh, and uh, it, it, which doesn't translate well into now in any capacity. Uh, um, and it's just a great film. I recommend it. You can check them out. The videos out on here. Okay. Uh, yeah. And if I did, I'll just say with Kobayashi, I'll mention him again. Uh, he was always all the interviews. This guy went through a lot of shit. I mean, he was one of the guys. He was a soldier. He was captured in uh, Manchuria. Uh, but always smiling, always very happy, you know, even though his films are kind of dark. So, but uh, yeah, I'll go over some more films of him. You know, Black River is a great film with the same actor. Uh, the Human Condition series, of course, with the same actor. Great actor, Tatsuyo Nakadai. Uh, and uh, that's Harry Carey. Yeah, check it out. How you ever you want to check it out. Uh, Shochuku, right? another great studio. Made so many different movies. Uh, and something different from you know the uh, giant monsters and the uh, you know straight up uh, martial arts stuff uh, that you see or the uh, the anime. All right, later.